everybody, it's Becky. I'm back today with a tween and teen essentials video. If you don't know already, I have two girls. I have one that just turned 12 and one that just turned six. So my 12 year old is technically, I think what they consider a tween, um, which when I was a kid, they didn't call them tweens. You had to wait till you were 13 and then you were a teenager. I don't know, maybe they called them preteens. I don't know, but she's a tween and a lot of things start happening to you when you're a girl, when you're around 10, 11, 12 years old. And I think it's a really good time to really focus on skincare and just overall hygiene and overall health and taking good care of yourself. So I have a couple things, some fun things, and then some things that I really have um, worked on finding to give my daughter that will help her to have take care of her skin and her body. The first thing that I have found probably the most challenging of my entire natural good for you skincare search from not just myself but from my girls is a good natural sunscreen that has a good safety rating from the EWG website which if you don't know that's the environmental working group and basically they talk about lots of things they talk about pesticides and food and things like that but they also have a consumer guide for um, body products beauty products sunscreen things like that and that is my main go-to when it comes to trying to find anything you're going to put on your body um, to see if it's natural or not to see what the safety warnings are Anything that um, is in those, the, any types of chemicals or um, hormone disruptors that are in those products, that's the place I go to research that and find out, is it safe, is it not safe? And more often than not, when I would see a natural sunscreen marketed at like a Walmart or the drugstore, I would go home, research it on the website and find out that no, it was not as natural as it seemed to be. So on the lines of sunscreen, I have been on the, on the search for a natural sunscreen that my girls did not hate to wear. And if you know anything about natural sunscreens, they work basically by being a physical sunscreen. So they are physically, there's a layer that's blocking the sun versus the conventional sunscreens, which are chemical sunscreens, which absorb into your body, get into your bloodstream and can affect your hormones and all different types of things. So that's the two types of sunscreens. So I have been on the search for a good physical natural sunscreen that was safe, effective, affordable, and something that my kids didn't hate to wear. If they hated to wear it, then they didn't want to wear it and go out. And there have been plenty of times with other, with other natural sunscreens where the girls, when they found out they had to wear sunscreen, they decided, I don't want to play outside anymore. They would rather stay inside than to wear the sunscreen and go out and play. Last year, I talked about the one that we were using, and we do still have that one and use it sometimes. But I wanted to find something that they could use specifically on their faces that did not give them that white cast that a lot of the natural sunscreens are going to. The um, titanium dioxide and the zinc are really what's gonna give you that white cast. And we're already really fair. So if you give us a white cast on top of what we've got, we look like what they call Jojo the Clown. If anybody remembers Jojo Circus from the Disney Channel, it was a little claymation cartoon and she was a clown, so her face was really white. And that's what they always say, they don't wanna have Jojo face. So I found a product when I was searching around on the EWG website, I stumbled upon a product that was actually recommended by the Environmental Working Group. So that says a lot in itself. The fact that they gave you their seal of approval for the UVA and UVB balance for the safety of the chemicals that are in your sunscreen and of the effectiveness. If they recommend a product on those criteria, then that really means something. And that company was the Beautiful Girl brand of sunscreen. They have other body products too. They have some scented body lotions and some little perfume mists and things like that that really young girls like to wear. But the main thing I was interested in was the one that is specifically designed for your face. And the reason this is different is not only is it recommended by the EWG, but they have tinted sunscreen. So they have ivory, fair, peach, and bronze, and then of course the no tint. So this is the fair, the fair tinted SPF 30 facial sunscreen. It's still a natural sunscreen, it's a physical sunscreen. Because of the tint that's inside, you're not going to get that white cast like you typically would. So it comes in a pump dispenser like this, and you just squeeze out a little tiny bit. And as you can see, this is, this is the fair. So it is for really light skinned people that are gonna burn very easily, which is us. Um, there's also the ivory, which is best for yellow undertones or ivory skin. The peach, which is best for peach undertones that normally tans, and the bronze is best for skin that tans easily or are naturally dark. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of a tint to it. When you rub it in, it really blends nicely. Of course, depending on your coloring, we are really light. Um, so 
You just have to make sure you blend it in really well around the jawline, which I'm working with her at doing. Um, she's getting better at it and she's getting better at remembering to use this every day. I told her, make it part of your morning routine. You brush your teeth, you wash your face, you put your deodorant on and you wear your sunscreen. It just becomes part of your natural morning routine. Um, it's organic, vegan friendly and gluten free. Dermatologists recommended not test it on animals. It recommends that you do shake it up before you use it since sometimes they can tend to settle a little bit. And it's made in the USA. And I actually used it a couple times under my makeup and it worked as a really great primer as well because I always wear sunscreen under my foundation. So I, I really can't recommend this enough. I really love it. I can't believe that I have finally found something that is A, going to work and be safe, uh, but also that solves a little bit of that problem that you have a lot of times with the wider cast that you tend to get with a physical sunscreen. Now they do also have one for your body. This is again SPF 30 daily sunscreen lotion and it comes in this cute little squeeze bottle. Um, it's UVA, UVB broad spectrum, organic, vegan friendly, gluten free, dermatolo dermatologist tested, non nano zinc oxide. This one again was rated by the EWG very highly and recommended by them. Um, it is a physical sunscreen. so. To compare the look that you get with a, a physical sunscreen to a chemical sunscreen is really an unfair comparison because you are going to have that layer on your skin. So it's going to be a little bit more of an oily texture. It's going to be a little bit, maybe a little bit more work to blend it in. But if you're wanting a safe, effective, natural sunscreen that is a physical sunscreen, not a chemical one, then this is a great option for you. And the fact that it comes highly rated from the EWG website, that means a lot. So those two products, and themselves were a very, very exciting thing for me to, to stumble upon and I wanted to share it with you guys in case you have been on the search for um, a safe sunscreen. And I like the fact that it's got a little bit of tint because it does give her a little bit of coverage as she gets older and maybe wants sort of a foundation almost type um, type coverage. Like, well, I wouldn't say foundation, more of a tinted moisturizer. This really has a little bit of coverage to it so she can um, get by with probably wearing this as her makeup for a little while when she gets a little bit older too. So it, it kind of serves a dual purpose in that way. So I really like that and I will link the website for you down below. Sticking with the topic of skincare, we also purchased for her for her birthday a Clarisonic Mia. Now this is actually not the one we got for her birthday. The one we got for her birthday was purple and it was the Mia one. They actually ended up having a flash sale on the Clarisonic website and it was cheaper to get the Mia two versus the Mia one. So I ended up returning the one that we've gotten for her birthday, but it's the same concept. A Clarisonic uses uh, sonic cleansing to get your skin, I think it's like six times cleaner than just using your hands or a washcloth or something. And I really wanted to start her off on the right path with skincare. I have a Clarisonic and I love mine. I can definitely tell a difference in the cleanliness of my skin, the softness of my skin, the clarity of my skin when I don't use my Clarisonic. And so given the fact that she's 12, I'm sure breakouts are probably not, not long down the road, I really wanted to start her out on a good skincare um, regime with her Clarisonic. Um, and I like now they're cute. They have all these really pretty colors. She really liked this one. Um, so it's a really great option for a young girl to really get them started on the road to taking better care of their skin. Along the same lines of the Sonic cleansing for your face, I also got her a, a Sonic toothbrush. Now I don't have it to show you because it's in her bathroom, but um, any Sonic toothbrush really. And I chose to go ahead and stick with the um, the Sonicare brand, I just feel like uh, that's what my husband and I have and that's what I like. I like that more than some of the ones that the kids might be tempted to want to get, like just the spinning toothbrushes and something. I really wanted the Sonic cleaning um, when it came to her toothbrush. We didn't buy the most expensive one you can get. We just got the Essence, which rounds around, runs around $40 and you can usually find coupons or rebates and things like that. But I really think that it's, again, setting her up on the right path to make sure that she's taking really good care of her teeth. Braces are coming not long down the road. I think it'll really help her and when that happens to keep her teeth clean. So I think it's a really good time to start it around this age so they really get used to um, how oral hygiene and good oral hygiene is really part of their routine every day they should be doing. For deodorant, I really wanted to find a natural version for her, as natural as I could, but still be effective. And that is really hard. It's kind of like the sunscreen issue. A lot of the ones that say they're natural maybe aren't still as natural as I wanted them to be, or if they were natural, they weren't very effective. So far, we've really been liking the Stink Bug Naturals All Natural Deodorant, the Aluminum Free. This is the lavender scent. I have picked this up at Whole Foods quite a few times. They have a couple different uh, scents to, per to pick from, and I think they might even have an unscented one. And I actually have one, too, that I use at night. When I take a shower at nighttime, I don't want to put on a traditional deodorant just because I, it's extra chemicals I don't really need for nighttime. 
but I still need a little bit of protection so that overnight I'm, you know, making sure that I stay fresh and clean. So I really like this one as well. It's not enough for me um, in the daytime because I'm running around or I'm exercising, you know, usually I'm working out almost every day. So I do use something else for me in the daytime, but for her, this is enough for her. It's what she needs uh, at this point in her life. And um, it's aluminum free, non-GMO, no propylene glycol, no animal testing and no fragrance. So it's got cornstarch and lavender and tea tree oil and coconut oil and organic beeswax, sodium bicarbonate. So everything in here is safe and natural and um, I think it's a good route to go to if you have a child that's really needing some, some kind of protection but you don't want to start with the conventional aluminum deodorants, this is a good one for you. And it's really not that expensive. I think it's like $5 or $4 for that. I think now is also a really good time, especially for girls, to invest in a good a good pair of tweezers. Um, I really love the Tweezer Man brand. This is my set. I have a small one in the car too because we all know what happens when you get in the car and you look in the mirror and you realize you have three eyebrows instead of two. Um, but I really love Tweezer Man. They stay sharp. They're really easy to get those little tiny hairs. And usually around this age, girls start getting kind of the little stray hairs here and there. And so it's really about teaching them what they should pluck and not to over pluck and to give them a good set of tweezers so that they're able to actually tweeze the hair they meant to get instead of grabbing like four that they didn't intend to pull along with the one they did intend to pull. So highly recommend a good set of tweezers. If you get it at Ulta, make sure you use a coupon um, because that's a, that makes it a little bit more affordable that way. Kind of on a fun note, girls at this age usually like to start doing fancy things with their hair, but sometimes they don't really know exactly how to do that. And so I found these really cute hair pieces. I actually found these at um, Bed Bath & Beyond, but I'm sure Amazon probably sells them. I haven't looked yet. But this is the Mia brand, and they have these cute little hair wraps. Like this one is a headband, and it's braided, so it really helps to give her that look that she's got like the braided halo without actually having to do it. I certainly don't have the skills to do it for her. And, um, you know, I don't know. She's, it's, this is easier for her. And of course we found a color that matches her hair. They have a couple different shades to match. So I really think it's awesome. I had never seen anything like that before. It's got the elastic in the back, so it's comfortable and it stretches quite a bit. And so she picked out the one that gives her like the braided headband kind of a style. And then I also picked up the ponytail version. So when she does a ponytail and she's just simple, got her hair pulled back, but this just makes it a little bit cuter, a little bit more trendy and fancy. And she really likes this one as well. So again, it's just a ponytail elastic, but it's got the hair on the end. And it looks really natural when you get it. And even in the light, when you see it outside, it blends in really nicely with her hair. And it certainly does not look like a hair piece. So I just think it's a fun way for girls to be able to play up their hair a little bit and be a little bit different and fancy without necessarily having to spend the time or know how to do all those things with their hair. And the last thing I would try to make sure that my girls always have access to are really good devotionals and books that are going to help them to be better people. I've done a couple uh, Christian book reviews on my channel of things that my girls have either read independently or that I have read to my oldest daughter. Um, and I've got a couple of suggestions here. Some of these I've mentioned before. Um, just for an everyday devotional, I really like these devotions for girls. They have all different ones with different age groups. This one's for the 10 to 12 age range. Um, you can pick these up at Lifeway or places like that. And so it has a devotional for each day and then some questions. A lot of times there's a little activity that you can do. And so she likes this and we've had this one for a while. It's not finished yet just because she kind of works, she kind of goes back and forth between her books. but. That is a really good recommendation. It doesn't have to be this one, any devotional for a girl around that age range to really be age appropriate, talking about topics that are relevant to their stage of life at that point. I think it's fun. I think it's fun for girls to know that they're not alone in some of the situations they're having and there are some ways to approach it to make it a little bit more manageable. And even if you're not a Christian, I'm sure there's probably some kind of a daily book like that for girls of that age that still kind of helps talk them through that stage of life um, from a non-Christian perspective. So just Google it or Amazon, look on Amazon and see if you can find something. Some other ones that we've liked are the Secret Keeper Girls series. This one's a girl's guide to understanding boys. And then we also have a girl's guide to best friends and mean girls. So any type of reading material like this that is kind of at the stage of life they're in where it's about maybe body issues or bullying or boys or friends issues, Anything like that that they're going to be able to read on their own time, at their own pace, and really help to give them a better understanding of some of the situations they're going through and kind of help them along in that process. Another book that my oldest daughter really loved is the Brave Girls Bible Stories. I mean, this is not a terribly thick book, but she read it in just one night. She loved the story so much, and there are times when I've heard her 
telling my youngest daughter some of the stories that she's read in this book. And so it all focuses on the powerful women of the Bible and what their stories of strength are, what they had to endure, what they did that made a difference. And I think it's a really good example for girls um, of any age, really, but especially this age when they're figuring out that girls can still do anything boys can do and girls can make a huge difference in the world. Those are my tween and teen girl recommendations for you guys. I've been kind of compiling this list um, over the last couple weeks of things that I have been using for my oldest daughter that um, I think it's funny that she's at this stage now. It's, fun, it's a fun stage for her and it's a fun stage for me to see her grow through, taking more time to do her hair and being interested in her fashion choices and what she wears and painting her nails and all those things. It's a really fun process, a really process. It's a really fun part of life for her and a really fun time for me to be able to share that with her. So I want to give you all some suggestions of things that maybe if you have girls around that age range, you could think about incorporating into their daily reading, do their hygiene routine, and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave links down below for everything I mentioned that I can find. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.